I am nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody too? Emily Dickinson, the author of that now famous poem, was a nobody. A recluse, a quiet genius, but a nobody nonetheless. Only after her death did we recognize her as a somebody or as somebody at all. I come from a really small town way north of here. There are a lot of trailer parks, a lot of poverty, a lot of cows, a lot of cornfields, not a lot of people. We're outnumbered by the cows. And I think it's common knowledge that no one hates snow days, right? Maybe the parents, I don't know. Your kids have to stay home, I don't know about that. But I do. Because on snow days in my school district, the majority of kids don't eat lunch. Most of them qualify for federal free lunch, and when school cancels, they eat nothing. Now I think to the rest of the world, a lunch lady in our school district is, by all definitions of the word, a nobody, right? But to these kids, She's somebody. She's everything. Now, just a few weeks ago, I was driving to take my SAT. By the way, I'm Aislinn. I'm a whopping five feet zero inches tall. Don't let the stage fool you. And I just celebrated my 17th birthday. Now, I was driving on Interstate 80, one of the busiest highways in the state. And ahead of me are tons of cars going by and going by and going by and going by which is amazing considering the little white dog that I see trapped in a guardrail on the other side of the road. Now, am I the best driver? <laughs> Don't tell my parents. But as soon as I could, I whipped a U-turn that could have landed me a spot in Fast and Furious, crossed several lanes of traffic, almost got hit by a semi myself, and finally got to that little dog and his two good Samaritans, two women who had stopped just a few moments before I had. One in freedom from the rail, the other was calling 911 for our own safety on the side of the road. And that's amazing considering all of the people who went by, isn't it? And I think to the rest of the world, these two women were nobodies. I didn't ask about their salaries or their alma mater or what they do because they had already proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that to this little dog and to me and to the world that day, they were incredible somebodies. And they taught me what couldn't be tested on the SAT and redefined my idea of what it means to be somebody. On a rainy Saturday morning in May, on the side of a highway in western Pennsylvania, in the middle of nowhere. They redefined this for the world that day. There's a deeply troubling and misplaced western idea that if you're not somebody, you can't do anything. And if you're not somebody, you're nothing. We measure it by the number of pieces of paper we have hanging in plastic frames above the computer in our office. We earn this title or meet this qualification because of our alma mater or our salary. But there are people every day. Look to your left. Do it. Look to your right. The person on your right changed their world yesterday. The person on your left will change their world tomorrow. Maybe just a little bit, but they're going to do it. We're obsessed with becoming somebody for the sake of it, for the piece of paper up on our wall that we're never gonna look at. Did these two women have a plan? I don't know. My plan was to get to the high school in time to take my test because I had already paid the college board. But they stepped outside this box. They showed the most incredible side of humanity to me, the side that goes instead of staying the side that pulls over instead of driving by because you can reschedule the SAT, the side that gives instead of taking. I don't call it the most incredible side of humanity because it's only represented by the most beautiful and brilliant and talented and exclusive. I call it the most incredible side because it's represented by every member. 
My challenge to you today, Pittsburgh, is to dig this out again from the depths of our egos and our salaries and the everyday stresses and trials that force us into the box of believing that because we're not somebody and we have enough to deal with, that we can't do anything. Not that it would matter anyway, right? We're too poor, too inexperienced, too uneducated, too black, too Middle Eastern, too Hispanic, too female, too young. And it forces us into this box of believing that because we don't meet this title, we can't do anything. And too often we write it off as nobody's problem because it might not be ours. For most of us, polio is not a problem, right? Because several decades ago, someone whose problem it also wasn't took it upon himself to make the vaccine his solution. Don't fall prey to the misguided idea that what you do doesn't matter and that you're too small to do something. And I can talk to you about being too small to make a difference. I look tall up here, right? And I have a mic. And up here, my voice is a lot louder. I look a lot taller. I feel like it too. My challenge to you today, Pittsburgh, is to redefine who you think you are, or who you think you aren't, if you still believe you're nobody and you can't change the world. And let me simplify a little further. If you still believe you are nobody, it's not true. Because nobody is changing the world. And out of context, that sounds pessimistic. And I'm a teenager telling you what we're not doing and what we're doing wrong. But what I'm here to tell you, Pittsburgh, is that nobody, the nobody on your left, the nobody on your right, they're changing the world every day, whether we know it or not. It's a lot like your carbon footprint, you know, your conscious or oblivious impact on the environment around you every day. If you're aware of your impact, you can redirect it and guide it towards something better. If you know you make a difference, make it a positive one. We are changing the world every day, whether you know it or not. The nobodies. You don't have to be somebody by Western society's idea. And too often people walk out of theaters like this and they see people on stage and they think, wow, I'm not those people, but I can do something. Other times people walk out of theaters like this and they say, wow, I'm not those people I saw on stage today, so I can't do anything. No footprint is so small that it cannot make an imprint on the world. I would know I wear five and a halfs. I think the best representation of what I'm talking about today is the fact that I'm talking about this today. I wish I could exemplify and represent those two women, the person on your left and on your right, because we all know them. We are them. I wish I could pull up amazing change-making people from all across the world who reject the idea that they have to be somebody to make a difference. They reject the idea that because they aren't Western society's idea of a somebody, they can't do anything. We celebrate those people because they are changing the world. So stop for the little white dog. Put in a good word about the minority or female applicant at your office because you're already there. Support a local business even if it is 20 cents more. Give a child a chance. Give a 17-year-old the chance to speak at TEDx. The Dalai Lama advises, if you ever think you're too small to be effective, try sleeping in a closed room with a mosquito. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, friends, Pittsburghers, today, we redefine this. Today, Act as if what you do makes a difference because it does. If you still think you're nobody, 
And if you and I are nobody, that's pretty awesome. Because nobody is changing the world. Thank you. Thank you.